Thank you, Lord. Amen. Good morning, Central. Good morning. I greet you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For all those who are able to stand, will you please stand? Congregation of Him, lead me, guide me. After which, we have a morning prayer by Deacon Robert Sutton. Uh, call response, welcome Holy Spirit, and music selection, deliverance of praise, Cornelius. <laughs>
morning central let us pray god the father god the son and god the holy spirit Oh, great the Father, we come, our Father, with thanksgiving on our heart. Thanking you, our Father, for the many blessings that you have thrown upon us, Lord God. We come, Lord God, thanking you, our Father, for life, for health, and a reasonable portion of strength. Oh, great the Father, we just want to thank you, our Father, that it's you, our Father, that cares all about us. It's you, our Father, say you'll never leave us and you never forsake us. It's you, our Father, say if we are buying you, you are buying us, Lord God. And oh, great the Father, we know, Lord God, that you are a God that cannot lie, nor the Son of Man have to repent. Oh, great the Father, we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord God, for our lying down last night in the early rising this morning. We just want to say thank you, Lord God, that it was you, our Father, that taught us with the finger of love and our Father lift our eyes up and see this day that we never saw before. And we just thank you, our Father, that when we walked out in our living room and found our family circle had not been broken for that all by itself. Our soul just cries out, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, that we did not get a phone call early that late last night, Lord God. Oh, great the Father, we thank you, our Father, that when we walked out of our home, Lord God, we found our Father a cool, bristed morning, Lord God. And we just want to say thank you, Lord God, for it in a special way. We thank you, our Father, for the falling of the leaves, our Father. Oh, great the Father, that cover your ground, Lord God. We just thank you, our Father, for everything that you have done for us, Lord God. We thank you, our Father, that it's you, our Father, that cares all about us in a special way. We asking you, our Father, to allow your word, Lord God, to laying around on Father in our heart, Lord God. We asking you, our Father, to touch our pastor who's going to stand on the wall, Lord God, and preach your word, Lord God. We asking you, our Father, to lower him in the well of wisdom, our Father, and no greater Father, allow him to preach our Father. Preach our Father the world of wisdom in a special way that someone, our Father, might stand up and walk out and say, I yield, I yield, I yield, I can't hold out no longer. We're asking you, our Father, to do this because we love you, Lord God. We love your word, Lord God, because your word is like a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. We just thank you, Lord God, that it's you, our Father, that cares all about us, Lord God, because you, our Father, you, our Father, is our scapegoat, God. You allow us, our Father, to escape, our Father, the things, our Father, that are not of you. Oh, great the Father, we're asking you, our Father, to please, Lord God, teach us, our Father, how to wait on you, Lord God, because you say into your word, they that waits upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Oh, great the Father, you ask us, our Father, to call on you, and you will answer thee and show thee great and mighty thing with thy know us tonight. We call on you right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, our Father, that you, our Father, will, will still heal the sick, Lord God. And, oh, great the Father, look in on the hospital, the mental institution, jailhouse, the old folks' home, Lord God. We're asking you, our Father, to do this because we're all grace of Father. We have a desire, our Father, to love your people, Lord God. Allow the blood of the Lamb, Lord Father, to hang over these doors, Lord God, that they, our Father, will come out, Lord Father. Oh, grace of Father, just to give you praise and give you honor. We're asking you, our Father, to look in on the, on the Marie family in a special way, Lord God, and let them know, Lord God, the way to the sin of death but the gift of God is eternal life. We love you, Lord God. We magnify your holy name, Lord God. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us, our Father, until we won't know more. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. You are all my strength and you are my redeemer. And blessing we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Fill us with your power.
We now have the recognition of visitors and by Julie, Deaconess Julie Livingston. Good morning, Central. We'd like to welcome each of you to an awesome and wonderful worship experience this morning. At this time, we're going to ask all of our visitors if you would please stand and remain standing. If there are no visitors, again, we say to our church family, welcome back to worship again. We ask at this time if you would take note of the following upcoming events. Pastor Ezell will preach at the Zion Hill Baptist Church, 1836 Zion Avenue, on today at 2.30. The male chorus will accompany the pastor. New members class will begin on next Sunday, immediately following the 8 a.m. worship service in room 101. Any members who would also like to attend, they're welcome to the classes. Our annual Thanksgiving service will be held on Wednesday, November 25th at 6 p.m. Christmas at Central sponsors are needed to adopt families. All ministries and members are asked to participate. Sponsorship forms are available at the front of the church and at the rear entrances. We ask that you please submit your sponsorship form as soon as possible to our church office. Our Christmas concert entitled Let Earth Receive Her King will be held on Saturday, December 19th. Rehearsals will be held on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. in the sanctuary. Report cards for the first marking period are now due. Please place report cards in the academic recognition mailbox located in room 104 by Tuesday, November 24th. All ministries and auxiliaries are reminded to submit your 2016 budget request form by Monday, November 30th to the Director of Operations. Budget forms are located in the mail room. Our pastor's itinerary for the, um, our, our pastor's upcoming itinerary, Reverend Ezell will be at the Oak, Oakey Springs Baptist Church, Springfield, South Carolina on Sunday, November 22nd at 3 p.m. and the male chorus and united voices will accompany the pastor. We ask of you to please view our website for additional announcements by logging on to www.centralbaptistcolumbia.org. And our today's scripture comes from the book of Acts, the third chapter, the first through the tenth verse. Thank you so much for your attention. Amen. Good morning, Central. We greet you in the blessed name of God, our Father, Jesus, our Redeemer, the Holy Spirit, our Comfort, and our God. Are you all cold? Yes. 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 I know service seems to be a little bit off. Somebody clap one way and somebody clap the other way and arms are folded. Y'all cold? Amen. Amen, somebody. I just know it's just a little bit off early this morning. Has God been good to anybody? That, that was still a little bit off to me. Let me ask you a question. Has the Lord been good to anybody? Come on, put your hands together. Let's give God praise in this building. Because the Lord is worthy to be praised. Uh, take a minute and hug the person next to you. Tell them good morning. Tell them I'm sorry I didn't speak to you earlier, but I was cold. Now, if you're not married, don't hold them too long. Now, no, don't be holding too long back there. Amen, somebody. Amen. Give them a holy hug. Amen. You all be all patting in the back and everything. Just hug them. Amen, somebody. God is a good God. And he can do anything but fail. Amen. When it's hot, we say, oh, it's so hot, I can't wait till it get cold. When it gets cold, it's cold this morning. How many you know it's a joy to be able to feel the cold? Huh? It's just a joy to be able to feel the cold. Um, God has not brought us this far in order to leave us. We 
We thank God for our presiding officer, Reverend Winslow Harrison, native Columbia, now all the way from Barbados. Amen, somebody. We praise God for Reverend Harrison, for Reverend Kenneth Wilson, and for Reverend Clarence Atterbury. We praise God for the ministry on their rostrum. And we praise God for each and every one of you. There's a sweet spirit that's in this place. And I know it is the spirit of the Lord. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, somebody tell me, where would I be? Amen. So it's a box there. It's good seeing you. Know that we're continually praying for you. I know it was difficult for you yesterday as we utilize Sister Heard here, your best friend. Amen. I praise God much for it. Just throw your hand up in there right there. Amen. Praise God for Sister Box there. And Sister Heard's son, Cedric and David, they're in the back. Y'all stand up back there. Those are her two boys right there. Amen. Praise God for David and Cedric. Amen. The dynamic duo. Amen, somebody. Praise God much for y'all, man. Your mama would have been so proud of y'all and Katrina on yesterday, the way y'all carried yourself. Continue to lead your life in a manner that she would be pleased with. Amen. And always be there for one another. Amen. Praise God much and mighty. Uh, we look toward the hills from whence cometh our help, knowing that all of our help cometh from the Lord. On yesterday morning, I began at, at 9 to 12 doing a leadership workshop at the Union Baptist Church with Pastor Henry L. Edmonds. Then we had our church, 150 students throughout the district taking the SAT, ACT pretest. Uh, then we had the home going service at 1 o'clock, and we had distribution of food baskets at 2 o'clock. A lot going on in a short period of time. Amen. But when you work well together, you can accomplish great things. When everybody not trying to get a credit, ain't nobody trying to lead nothing and run nothing and do nothing. But when we all just come together for God to get the glory, what a wonderful sight that was on yesterday. Seeing our, our, our Girl Scouts, our Senior Citizen Executive Committee, our Brotherhood, our Mayor Corps, everybody working well so together, our Education Committee, in order for this to happen. Thank you for your cooperative efforts on yesterday. Amen. Were you pleased with your baskets? Amen. Amen, somebody. We gave out 80 some Thanksgiving baskets on yesterday. My wife and I did it ourselves. Let me ask you a question again. Since I spent 2000 on the basket, were you pleased with your baskets? <laughs> amen, amen. We just wanted to do something for our seniors and bless you in a way because you have been a blessing to us that we want to be a blessing to you as people. When we give back, it makes you feel good to be able to give Amen. back. Amen, somebody. It makes you feel good to to give back. Let us prepare to give back now to the Lord what the Lord has blessed us with as we worship God through tithes and offering. Let us stand together. I should just make sure we clear the lobby. I don't want nobody left outside doing giving. We don't want to insult nobody. Amen. You see that? We would insult some people. <laughs> amen. Amen. Take your time. We patiently wait. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. God, thank you for the opportunity to give back to you a portion that which you have blessed us with. We bring your tithe and we bring our offering. For your word has declared that if we are faithful in our giving, you would open up the windows of heaven and you will pour a blessing that we won't have room enough to receive. God, we stand in need of a blessing. But our blessing is a result of faithful obedience to your word. Now we come giving back to you that which you have blessed us with. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank God and amen. amen. Outside wall, our face a wall. Inside our face each other. You in the, follow the direction of our ushers. And when you come by the tithe and bark, just smile. The Lord loves a cheerful giver.
so much of that which you've given for the advancement of the kingdom here on earth. Amen. Amen. November Amen. is Stewardship Emphasis Month at the Central Baptist Church and one of the greatest joys of seeing people grow in their stewardship efforts and their stewardship of time and their stewardship of talent as well as their stewardship of tithing. It's very important for me for leadership to be accountable I can truly say to you that we're blessed here at the Central Baptist Church that we have staff members who follow the example of tithing back to the Lord. I told you all the other Sunday, I have a problem with people who are on payroll from the church and don't tithe. That's a serious problem for me because your salary is coming from those who trust God enough to tithe. And then you work here and don't trust them enough to give back. Amen, somebody. So this month here, we've been highlighting our staff who are faithful tithers, amen. I told them when they come up to talk about tithing, keep it real. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Keep it real. Don't come up like you've been doing it all your life when you know you had not amen. So we told them just to keep it real. We had to twist and pull and almost just threaten to get Cynthia to come up here this morning to share why I tithe. But she is one of the most dedicated and faithful secretaries you can find anywhere. Amen, somebody. Now, that's unless, amen, somebody. Amen, amen. Now, she's going to take time off for a hair appointment. And sometimes she's going to extend the lunch break. Come on, Cynthia. Good morning, Central. First, I give honor to God, Pastor Ezell, associate ministers, officers, members, and friends. I stand before you on this blessed morning to share with you why I tithe. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me guiding me and never leading, leaving me through my disobedience in your word and your money that you allow me to earn. I haven't always tied my 10% or more. I robbed God of all his tithes and offering. Why? Because at that time, it seemed like it was the hardest thing for me to do. There was times when I would talk with Pastor Ezell about my tears, sorrows, questions for tomorrow, just things I didn't understand. He would give me blessed assurance that my trials come to make me strong. He would also say, Cynthia, you got to trust God with your tithes and offering. 
and see how he would bless you. The Holy Spirit was dealing with me as well with the haves and the have-nots being disobedient to God's word. But old church, when God pricked my heart and I continued to study his word, in the book of James, around that fourth chapter, chapter, it talks about faith. Faith without works is dead. So I had to humble, submit myself through God's grace and mercy in order to be a faithful tither. Let me go, Pastor Ezel, church family, and give you my three points why I tithe. First, go to John 10.10. 10. God gave his son that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Two, then you go over to Philippians 4.19 that says, but my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Lastly, because God tells us in Luke 6, 38, give it and it shall be given unto you a good measure, shaken down, pressed down, shaken together and running all over. And I know God has blessed me. I've been through so much in my life. Pastor Ezel would tell me, Cynthia, you need to tie. I didn't understand about tie. I didn't want to tie at that time because I thought about Cynthia. But I know now it's not about Cynthia. It's about God. So that's why I can stand before you today and say, give it a try. Trust him. Surrender all to him. Why not let God do for you what he's done for me? Thank you. Miss Brown got her three points in there. Do a hand up in there on her clothes. Start waving her head and put a hand on her hip. That's the black woman's mantra. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much, Cynthia. And see, as president of a choir, you can effectively lead others when you set the example yourself. Amen. Praise God and much. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Let us prepare for um, the preach word on today. Our scripture from Acts the third chapter, verse one through ten. Let us stand. On the third Sunday, we do a congregational. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Third chapter, verse one through ten. Let's read it together. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Civil and gold have I none, but such as I have I give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he who sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Let the church say,
Lord is everything to me. He said he would my comfort be. The Lord said he'd be right there. But my God is everywhere. God said it. I believe it. God said it.
said his word, he said he'd take care of us. God said, I believe God said, I believe it. God said, I believe it. God said, I believe it. Yeah. God said it. God said it. church say amen let the church say amen again God said it I believe it and I'm gonna take him at his word amen 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 thank you choir for that selection Central I told you many times in life you have to value relationships and nurture them over a period of time Reverend Byron Dixon is in Charleston this morning preaching at the Mar Street Baptist Church. And we were very fortunate enough to get one that I've been friends with for over the last 25 to 30 years, Sister Beverly Roden, to come in and play for us on the day. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for Beverly. Thank you, Beverly. Praise God much and mighty for you. Amen. 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 Acts the third chapter. For sermonizing purpose, I want to look at verse number six. The third chapter, verse number six. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I kind of like the way Eugene Peterson translated that sixth verse. Eugene Peterson said, I don't have a nickel to my name, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. I want to talk a little bit on this stewardship Sunday from the sermonic thought, such as I have. Such as I have. My brothers and sisters, as stewards, we are owners of nothing but we are trustees of everything. I am what I am by the grace of God. A Christian steward is one who realizes that God has a prior claim on all we have. A steward realizes that as Christians, we live and move and have our very being in Christ. A steward recognizes God as his preeminent master and lives for him. I reminded you on last Sunday, it's never about us, but it's always it's about him. The whole of the Christian life, personality, your time, your talent, influence, material substance, everything belongs to Christ. The entire doctrine of Christian stewardship hinges on the belief that God owns everything and that we are stewards of what has been entrusted to our care. What I have, God gave it. Who I am, God made me. Where I'm going, it will be God who will take me. It's never about us. It's always about him. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, you don't have to be jealous over what someone else may have. Because how many of you know what God has for me? Can I say that again in this building? What God has for me. Y'all miss that. What God has for me is for me. Let me tell you when you truly get blessed, when you learn to celebrate what God is doing for somebody else. Amen, somebody. 
when you learn to be able to celebrate someone else's blessing, say, I don't have to be jealous of my neighbor's house or my neighbor's car if God blesses them with something big and better. Because guess what it means? He's in my neighborhood. And since since he's in my neighborhood, it, it's just a matter of time when he comes on my street. Amen. And sometimes you just got to learn to celebrate with someone else. How many of you know that your gift would make room for you? Uh, how many of you know your haters make you great? Uh, I wish I had a little help in here this morning. Somebody here ought to be able to praise God for what God has already done in your life. Uh, somebody ought to thank God for what? God has already brought you from it. Thank God how God has already blessed you. If the Lord doesn't bless me anymore, he's already been better than me than I've been to myself. If I have a witness in here, I don't have a few praises in here that can stop right where you are and just praise God for what God has already done. My grandmama used to say, much obliged. Much obliged for what he's already done. Let's examine our text on today. We find Peter and John. John going up together in the temple at the hour of prayer. Now is a transition word. What a transition word does is introduce something that's getting ready to happen in light of something that has already happened. Huh? See, Peter and John. And is a conjunction, and a conjunction connects. See, Peter and John. Peter and John would be strange to other folks seeing them work together. Peter was aggressive, and John was passive. Peter was a hothead. If Peter couldn't lead the song, he'll quit the choir. Huh? John would just fall in wherever they needed to be. And so sometimes God has a way of pairing folks together that other folks think would not normally be together. But Peter and John, because see, in chapter 2, we had the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. So because they were filled with the Spirit, now unlikely folks could work together. Let me tell you, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you can work with anybody. You can sing with anybody. You can serve with anybody when you're led by the Holy Spirit. You can't be led by the Spirit with this crazy talk about, I don't like her. I don't like him. I can't stand her. Then you don't, you see, you don't know who my daddy is. Uh, we're supposed to have the same daddy. We're supposed to have the same father. The Bible says he that loveth not knows not God. So if you can't love me, you surely can't love God. If you can't love his child, how are you going to love the daddy? If you love me, you'll love him. We'll love one another. Peter and John went up together in the temple at the hour of prayer. These two disciples who were great spiritual leaders of the early church were very close companions. As an example, Peter sent a hand signal to John to ask Jesus who the betrayer was. John and Peter together followed the Lord the night of the arrest and John obtained permission for Peter to enter the courtyard of the high priest. You remember Peter. Peter would cuss you and cut you. Huh? Can I tell y'all something? I'm going to tell y'all a secret. All of us got a little Peter in us. Uh, on the choir. On the roster. All in all. God, everybody got a little Peter in them. Everybody get hot-headed. There are some words that you thought you forgot, but somebody know how to, how, how to, how to, how to hit your last Negro nerve. Amen. But thank God for salvation. Thank God for being filled with the Holy Ghost. Ain't me somebody. Is anybody testimony? I thank God I'm not how I used to be. Is that anybody testimony here? I thank God I'm not what it shall be. Because how many of you know that the Lord is still working on me? Huh? You better tell somebody, don't roll up on me like that. The Lord's still working on me. Uh, don't be messing with me like that. The Lord's still working on me. I, I wish I had a little help in here. Somebody ought to just throw your hand up if, the, if you know where the Lord has brought you from. Y'all ought to just say, look where he brought me from. He brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. 
Y'all remember Peter, 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 Peter used to hang out with the Godfather. And Peter said, I don't know karate, but I do know karate. Peter would cut an ear off in a minute, somebody. Yeah, not Peter and John. Therefore, it is not surprising that both would be going together to the temple to pray. Uh, in the Old Testament, it was a habit of going daily to the temple for believers. They went there at the hour of prayer. The purpose in going to the temple was to pray. Praying crowd is a small crowd in any day now. But being the ninth hour, this was about three o'clock in the afternoon. It's good to come to the house of the Lord for the power of prayer. The God's house is a house of prayer. Amen, somebody. And I don't know about you, but I still believe that prayer works. I still believe that God hears and answers prayer. Uh, and see, you can't judge people, and you should never try to judge anybody. Because sometimes a person sitting in church, they may not move like you move. But it doesn't mean that the Lord is not working on them. See, sometimes you can sit right where you are and be so full, you don't know what to do, but you're just giving God praise where you are. Amen. See, you don't have to praise him like I praise him, but there ought to be a praise on the inside. There ought to be another yes, Lord, where every now and then you just cannot hold your peace. Amen. I don't know about you, but I look forward to coming to the Lord's house every Sunday. It doesn't matter what happened during the course of the week. If I could just make my way out to the Lord's house on Sunday morning, I got a feeling that everything going to be all right. Amen. When I'm coming in the door and getting out the parking lot, getting in the car, I don't want to hear no bunch of foolishness. Uh, don't come to me talking about a bunch of drama, what went on with somebody. I just need to get in the house. Because uh, if I get in the house, I got a feeling that everything will be all right. Sometimes you may come in feeling sad, but you ought to leave out feeling glad. You may come in feeling down, but you ought to leave out feeling up. Uh, if I could just get in with the saints, if I just can make my way to the Lord's, uh, I believe I got a praise in my spirit. I got a praise in my belly. I gotta thank you when I come in the house. And if I'm gonna make up in my mind to get out my clothes on Saturday night, get up early Sunday morning, get you here barely 15 minutes before you normally play. If I'm gonna come to church, I might as well have church. I don't have time to come and act cute and wonder what the person next to me is gonna think about what I'm going through. The person next to me don't know what the Lord has done for me. The person next to me don't know where the Lord has brought me from. The person next to me don't know how my body is wrecked with pain. It was nobody but the Lord. Nobody but the Lord. And taking medicine all week long. And you can press your way out to the house. Y'all can't help but to praise him. But what the Lord has already done. In our text, the Jews observed three times a prayer. In the morning at 9 a.m., afternoon at 3 p.m., and evening at sunset, and then the sixth hour at 12 noon. At these times, devout Jews and Gentiles who believed in God often would go to the temple to pray. Peter and John were going to the temple for the 3 o'clock prayer service. Peter and John were still living for the most part as obedient Jews, keeping the appointed times of prayer though they now had significant different mission. Uh, a certain man, the text said, was lame from his mother's womb. In other words, it means that he was born that way. This certain man who was lame would never have the privilege, Brother Kerry Rich, of dunking a basketball like LeBron James. He was lame from his mother's womb. This young man that was lame from his mother's womb, nobody would would go to him if they were looking for a date for the prom. He was lame. I wish I had a little help in here. He was lame from his mother's womb. This young man right here would never enter a dance contest. They didn't have to worry about him doing the nay nay, not a whip. I wish I had a little help in here. He was, am I talking to the right group? He was lame from his mother's womb. This man was so lame he could not walk. Had to be carried everywhere he went. Let me put a footnote here and thank those who brought him to the temple daily. Even though he was asking for money, they brought him every day and laid him in the same place. See, birth defects in those days were seldom corrected because they did not have the medical help which we thankfully possess today. 
He was lame from his mother's womb. The man had never known a day in his life in which he could walk. This man was plagued by this condition from the time of his birth. This is like the condition of every sinner. They laid him daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Peter, for the ex arms of them that entered into the temple. Because of his problem, all the lame man could do was beg for money, and he did it at the temple. Many people like this lame man still view the place of worship chiefly as a place of material handing out. Such folks are seldom interested in spiritual help from the church. But my brothers and sisters, he was a beggar. Beggar would often be waiting places where they would have the most traffic, such as along the roads or near the city, or at the entrance to the temple. The beautiful gate was one of the favorite entrance into the temple complex, and many people passed through it on their way to worship. Since giving money to beggars was considered praiseworthy in the Jews' religion, the lame man was wisely had placed himself where the alms givers could see him. As Peter and John entered the temple, the lame man called out to them and asked them for some money. Verse 3 said, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. In other words, Peter said, look at us. There ought to be a difference in the Peter and John you see now. For you see Peter and John after Pentecost. If you had seen Peter and John before Pentecost, you would have saw one thing. But now you see Peter and John after Pentecost. We ought to be able to say to the world that they ask, believe us, look on us. Uh, the world ought to be able to look on us and see that there is a difference in our lives. Uh, what a wonderful change has come over me since Jesus came into my life. Uh, the things that I used to do, I, I just don't do them anymore. The places I used to go, I don't go anymore. The thoughts that I used to have since Jesus came into my life. Uh, I have a witness in here. Somebody ought to be glad for the wonderful changes in your life. Uh, every day of my life, I thank him for his saving power. And I thank him for his grace. And I thank him for his mercy. I thank him for his grace, his unmerited favor. I don't deserve his favor. But I thank God for his favor anyhow. Is there anybody here know that you're here today not because because you've been so good and not because you've been so kind and not because you've been so holy and not because you live so good but because of God's grace and because of God's mercy so nobody in here has the right to throw that nose up at anybody nobody in here has the right to look down upon anybody I'm just glad that the Lord is saved me to have a witness in here I'm glad there was a time I I wasn't fit to live. That was a time I wasn't ready to die. Time I had no God on my side. That was a time I had no heaven in my view. But I'm glad that he looked beyond my fault. That he supplied all of my needs. And I just want to thank him. Anybody glad that he saved you? I'm glad that he saved my soul. I'm glad that he made me whole. I'm glad that he picked me up. I'm glad that he turned me around. And I'm glad that he placed my feet on solid ground. Uh, that person sitting next to you, uh, they don't know why you're getting happy like you're getting happy right now. Tell them you don't know my story. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I'm dealing with right now. But is there anybody here that regardless of what I'm dealing with for this moment right now, I can still praise him. Is there anybody here that I will I said I will I will bless the Lord at all time. His praise. I said his praise. I wish I had a little help in here. I said his praise will continually come out of my mouth. I wish I had a few praises here. Just to praise my God. Why can you praise him? He woke me up this morning. He started me on my journey. His is there anybody here that'll praise my God? Is there anybody here that'll praise my Savior? I found the person next to you. Tell him I'm going to praise him. If I got to praise him all by myself, I dare you to 
to throw those hands up and say he's worthy. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. I feel like preaching in here this morning. Verse 5. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something. The man looked at him. He wanted some money. Then Peter said, Civil and go. Have I known? But such as I have. Huh? I give thee. But it's not about me. It's in the name of Jesus. The Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Is that not good news? Peter and John had a confrontation with this lame man, which proved for the lame man to be a tremendous blessing when he saw them. It's like the Salvation Army worker who rings that bell in the front of the store when you enter. The lame man was in one of the entrances of the temple to ask Peter and John for him. Peter told him, just look on us. You ought to see a difference in us. Can we say the same to the world today? Can we say the same to the world today? Look on us. They ought to be able to see a difference. In other words, you don't have to wear a big cross. Hanging down, dragging. Huh? You don't have to get the biggest Bible and carry with you. Now, when I was raised in Georgia, we didn't say carry, we said tote. Huh? You don't have to wear the longest dress, dragging down, scared to put makeup on, looking like plain Jane. Huh? You with me? Ah. And so we ought to say to the world, look on us. Now watch this now. We try to play these games sometimes thinking that if I dress holy, it makes me holy. We got to live a life of holiness. The man had his mind on money and that's all he expected. That's the world view of heaven. Peter says, silver and gold have I known. See, John had no money for handout. So it's evident here that Peter and John had to be Baptist preachers. Did y'all catch that? I just want to make sure y'all caught that. This, was, this would be disappointing to the man. But they had something better to give him. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Often God gives us a command for our blessing. The idea that commands are a burden is refuted again and again in the scripture. Commands often precedes blessing, as it did here. We got to be obedient to the command in order to receive the blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ, the cause or the cure was Christ. It was not Peter, nor was it John, but it was Christ who caused the cure. Leave out Christ and you do not have a cure. This is a problem with our world. They do not want Christ. So they cannot solve their great problem. Many times we go to God and talk to God about our problem. Can I suggest to you there are some times that you need to go to your problems and talk to them about your God. Huh? Peter demanded the man's attention and the beggar gave it, obviously expecting a gift. What was offered, however, was not money but rather something far more valuable. Peter commanded the beggar to get up and walk. Note that the command was not by Peter's authority, but rather in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, calling on Christ's power and authority. The apostle was doing this healing through the Holy Spirit's power, given to them by Christ and not based on their own. Verse number 7 of the text said, And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones receive strength. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that we serve a right now Satan. In other words, regardless of your condition, he can move on our condition 
and he can do it right now. That's good news right now. It doesn't matter how long it's been, or how, how, how long you've been in a situation, God's delivering and power is right now power. Press your claim, Reverend, I'm glad you asked. Mark 10, 51 and 52 says that, and Jesus answered him and said, to blind bondage to males by the roadside of Jericho, uh, what would you have me to do? The blind man said to him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately, or right now, he received his sight. Mark 1, 42, 42 said, I came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and said, Thou will be clean. And right now, or immediately, the leprosy left him. Luke 4, 38 through 39 said, He rose out of the synagogue. He entered into Simon's house, and Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her, and he rebuked the fever, and he left her immediately. <laughs> That's good news right there. That regardless of what may be going on right now, I want you to know the Lord can show up and he'll remove it right now. That's good news. It doesn't matter how long you've been in it. It doesn't matter how, how difficult the problem may be. Uh, he is uh, right now God. And I don't know about you, but that's good news there. That I don't have to wait on anything. That he can change my situation. And he can turn it around and he can do it right now. 8, 9 of the text saying he was leaping up. Stood and walked and entered into the temple. He was walking, leaping, and praising God. Oh, that's good news. And everybody around him saw that he was walking, leaping, and praising God. The man was unable to walk before. But now not only was the man walking, but the man was leaping as well. And the man began praising God. When this man was healed, he gave much evidence of his both in his walk and his talk. Uh, others around him saw him, and he was dancing like he was crazy. He was dancing like he had lost his mind. For he realized what the Lord had done for him. Do I have a witness in him? As I get ready to press toward a close right now. When it said that the man stood up and the man began to walk and he began to leap and he began to praise God. Uh, so I don't know how you feel but if I've been lame for all of my life. Uh, if I had to have somebody to carry me around uh, everywhere that I winner uh, but now I can do for myself uh, I gotta show response to God uh, how I feel about what the Lord had done for me first of all it said the man began to walk uh, I don't know how you feel but I you see he I'll sing a sing a song that walk with me Lord uh, while I'm on this tedious journey I need Jesus just to walk with me uh, is there anybody here that need the Lord to walk with him? I used to hear him saying he walked with my mother. I need Jesus just to walk with me. He walked with my father. I need Jesus to walk with me while I'm on this long and tedious journey. I need Jesus just to walk with me. I used to hear him say hold my hand Lord guide my feet Lord to say anybody here need Jesus to walk with him not only did the man begin to walk but the man began to leap every now and then you got to be willing to leap for the Lord every now and then when I'm sitting in my seat I just can't hold my peace I got to be willing to leap for the Lord is there anybody here ever had to leap for the Lord you said pastor when should I leap I don't know when you'll leap but all I have to do is have a good memory for when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all 
that is done for me my soul says hallelujah I want to thank the Lord for saving me y'all got excuse me now but when I realize where I've been where the Lord brought me from I have to take a leap every now and then is there anybody here that's willing to leap for the Lord if the Lord been good to you why don't you just leap one time if the Lord is made Made a way for you, leap two times. If the Lord has healed your body, leap three times. I wish I had somebody that'll praise my Lord and I'll praise my Savior. Is there anybody here that'll give God the glory? Is there anybody here that'll praise Him anyhow? Do I have an anyhow praiser in here? Anyhow, you fix the love. It's all I wish I had somebody but he walked in his leave and then he began to praise God he praised God anyhow for Peter says such as I have I give unto thee uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the name of the one to the architect who's the chief cornerstone in the name of the one to the baker who's the living bread in the name of the one to the botanist who's the lily of the valley in the name of the one who's confused he's a mind regulator in the name of the one who's bereaved he's a resurrection of life to the astronomer he's a bright and morning star to the sinner he's a savior to the doctor he's a grateful fisher to a lonely friend he's a friend that'll stick closer than a brother but such as I have somebody says such as I have, I give unto thee. This month of stewardship tells somebody, I may not have all you have, but such as I have, I, I may not be a great solo choir singer, but I'll sing background. For such as I have, I give unto thee. I wish I had somebody, so I'm going to serve the Lord until I die. Is there anybody here that such as I have, I'm going to give to my master. For I want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Can we praise him for such as I have? I'm going to have the eyes that I have to see the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living, just such as I have. Is there anybody here that can praise God while you're standing up now? But such as I have. Is there anybody here? Turn to the person next to you and tell them the Lord. Tell them the Lord. Tell them the Lord has been good to me. Has it been good to you, Adam Barry? Has it been good to you, Harrison? Has it been good to you, Wilson? Has it been good to you, Richardson? Has it been good to you, Scott? Has it been good to you, Payne? Has it been good to you, Kelly? Has it been good to you, Wilson? Has it been good to you, Livingston? Has it been good to you, Taylor? Has it been good to you, Edward? Has it been good to you, Brian? Somebody said it long. 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 I dare you to give him praise. I dare you to give him glory. Do I have anybody over here that could give him praise? Do I have anybody right here that'll give him praise? Do I have anybody over here that'll give him praise? Do I have anybody right here that'll give him praise? Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Give God praise. text on today reminds us such as I have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk 
you don't have to have the same talent or skill someone is there. Lord told me to that use what you have in order for God to get the glory. For such as I have. When we stand before God in that final hour, he's not asking you about someone else. He want to know that you use what you have. And let your light shine so me. So our Father which art in heaven would get the glow. Go ahead with that, Beverly. I like that. All to Jesus I surrender. As we prepare to extend the invitation to discipleship, let us stand. There may be someone today up under the sound of my voice who desires membership in our church family. Will you step out from where you are today? Give the pastor your hand. But give God your heart. You may come by letter, by your Christian experience, a candidate for baptism. The door of the church is open. Will you come? Yes, 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 yes. Will you come today? Will you come? Yes. Will you surrender to him today? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, will you come all to Jesus? Sounds mighty good, church. Worldly pleasures. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Wow, 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 we remain standing and we prepare to go to the Lord in prayer. Sister Washington, y'all bring Sister Washington to the altar. I want to pray for you today. Come on to the altar. Celebrating 95 years young. Amen, somebody. Come on to the altar.